start in time. We can. All right. Welcome back, you beautiful cats and kittens. No, just kidding. Mm, yeah. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to. You can address this one today, too, by the way. That got to go like this, <sighs> sideways. It's like, just look like in the center of the ring light. <laughs> All right. Yeah, just look. That, let's not overcomplicate it. I'm not going to stare at that thing the whole time. Dude, I'm just like fucking address the corner in the thing. room. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Welcome back to another episode of Into the Lion's Den. We've got a special feature today. Special um, guest. You got your standard hosts, Mr. Ryan Karras and Mr. Christian Griffith. Today we've got Dan Taylor, uh, Pride Roofing and Construction Sales Manager. So welcome to the show, big dog. Salesman extraordinaire. <laughs> extraordinaire. All right. Well, I'm, a, I'm ex- definitely excited to be on here. Um, Bring a little bit of life to the party with you too. So. <laughs> Exc- excited to be on yeah, here. We are pretty boring. <laughs> it's the first non-ginger in the room. Yeah, it's the best-looking guy in the room. So that's all right. <laughs> Take it easy, Clark Kent. All right. Um, so, what do you have in mind for us, Ryan? So we're just gonna pick him apart a little bit, learn a bit, a little bit, a little yeah. bit about him. A little yeah. bit about him. <coughs> You're telling me to pause? Well, go cough outside. <laughs> the cameras, the cameras can operate themselves. <laughs> What are you doing, dude? <laughs> I don't know, like, He's all fucking dying. It was all kinds of bad. I'm sorry. He's like fucking dying and you're yelling. At him. <laughs> He's falling. We're, over. we're talking. <laughs> we're talking. He's over there. He's like. <laughs> so That's yeah, funny. I mean, I I think that um, I it's 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 important to get the teams out in the public more or less. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of homeowners around here have probably seen Dan around. They've seen him on. Some of our social media, they've probably seen them in videos, but I, I mean, for me, it's more of just uh, getting to know some of the team members, letting them share kind of who, what makes them them, right? Mm-hmm. And um, I, I think it's, it plays in, Dan and I were having a conversation yesterday of, of um, the expectation of that we can't expect everybody else to operate in the same capacity that we do. Mm-hmm because there's kind of a, a caveat. Um, I think you have it too, but kind of like the, it's almost like a 1% thing mm-hmm. that there's just part of what makes us us that some people just don't possess, I guess you'd say. Mm-hmm. Um, I think some of it can be learned, but I think a lot of it's just ingrained in who you are and your upbringing, things like that. But um, so yeah. Free form with Dan. I'll ask him some intrusive questions and Danny boy, go ahead and deep dive into your life, home slice. <laughs> deep dives with Dan. <laughs> so, so it's actually kind of funny in deep dives. Uh, I have a lot of friends that have looked at our Facebook posts. So every time that we talk, it's always, uh, hey, deep dive with Dan. And it kind of goes way on the deep side. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just kind of, I get a lot of crap for that one, but it's all in good fun. So. Give us a little bit of who you are, you know, kind of maybe a little backstory of baby Dan all the way to, to current Dan. And uh, you can go as detailed or non-detailed as you want, but um, it's clear you have some talent in the world of sales. I think that it's been that way since you've been in sales. Yep. Um, but, yeah, just a little bit about you. Yeah, so I started out. It was actually it was actually kind of funny. I I, I got out of high school and went into um, landscaping, and I and I fucking hated that. That sucked. I mean, you talk about rough work, and I was like, man, I don't want to, I don't want to do landscaping the rest of my life. So a buddy of mine that worked for me, he actually knew a welder. He was like, hey, you should come weld. And I was like, dude, I I know nothing about welding. I was like, there's no way they're gonna let me just walk in and start welding on stuff. So. Went to go be a welder, which was a lot of fun, um, a lot of hard work, a lot of boiler rooms, um, a lot of factories. So that was definitely interesting. And then the company I worked for at the time actually uh, went under, so laid off a lot of people. And a good buddy of mine, he's like, <clears throat> hey, you should come sell cars. He's like, I've been trying to get you to come sell cars for years. I think you'd be good at it. And I was like, there's no way I'm, I'm going to come sell cars. I mean... Next to politicians, uh, it goes politicians, car salesmen are the next most hated person uh, <laughs> that there is. So I was like, I definitely don't want to go sell cars, man. He's like, no, he's like, you'll love it. 
So I, I, <clears throat> my wife was my girlfriend at the time, and she's like, yeah. Uh, so she's like, I think you should go do it. I think it would be really good. So started selling cars actually uh, in the month of June on uh, a couple days after my birthday, and I was hooked instantly on it. So I was like, man, I really love everything about sales. So I uh, started selling cars and progressed through the ladder over the years and had held different positions with new car manager, used car manager, GSM, GM, uh, got to experience a lot of different things. And that's kind of what like shot off my sales career and really pushed me into just loving everything about sales, meeting new people, uh, something different every single day, overcoming different objections. Um, how can I help serve you to fit what your needs are? Um, and then that kind of correlated directly into the roofing world. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty evident that we get a lot of storms out here and a lot of people need roofs. So it's just manufacturing those relationships on how we can better serve our community because there, there's a lot of guys out there that probably shouldn't be in the roofing industry so I look at, at it as the perspective of I know that we offer a quality product and we do it with the utmost integrity. So I want to be the person to offer those services, not have somebody else come in and promise the world and under deliver and kind of tarnish all the other good guys in the industry. So well, there's a lot of those. There's a lot of those for sure. A ton of those guys. I got a question for you. So you said you had an instantaneous love for everything about sales. For instance, for me, the thing about sales that I like the most is it's the closest thing I can find to a sport. It's like competition every single day, whether it's with yourself or with your teammates. You're always getting better, putting in repetition. I love that about sales. What dry, draws you to it? Just I mean, my question. I would definitely <laughs> say, obviously, the competitive nature is huge. Um, I think anybody in the sales industry would lie to you if they said they weren't competitive. Mm-hmm. So I think just amongst us three in here, we can tell that we're all pretty competitive. Yeah, there's um, lots of... Banter going on. Yeah. Just some banter. <laughs> Raz each other up a bit. So uh, <laughs> I definitely think it's 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 the chase. Mm-hmm. I think it's the chase of that next sale or meeting that next really good prospect that you can build a relationship with. And for me, it's it's more. It's not necessarily the sale. I think that has a part to do with it, as always. But I think it's uh, the connection that I get with people. Uh, I listen to. Your guys' podcast the other day, and you guys were talking about uh, being introverted. Like, I'm totally the complete <laughs> opposite of what you two could imagine. Like, I feed off of other people, and, like, I want to be around people as much as I can, and that's kind of – that fills up my tank. Mm-hmm. So, for me, it's, like, just meeting that person, being able to have that connection, learn about them, mm-hmm. um, learn their backstory. I mean, a lot of these people – I talk to pretty frequently, more, probably more than most people would talk to any other customer. Um, like I just had a customer call me today. He's like, hey, I'm just checking in on you. So like for me, like I, f- I find that really cool when I build those relationships. Yeah, you seem to be the king of relationship building. Uh, I love it. I love it. All of your clients are incredibly, <laughs> incredibly comfortable with you. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, well, it works. But, yeah. Obviously, your, your numbers show it. <laughs> Excuse me. You mentioned one thing about the chase. You love the chase. I want to ask both of you guys a question. So generally when I'm on the roof <coughs> with an adjuster, I'm kind of poking and prodding, asking them questions about their history, their backstory, that type of stuff, it, depending on how much they're reserved or whatever is how much I pour into it, I guess. But I've met probably, I don't know, at least 100 adjusters who used to be in the roofing world, right. and they quit. And every time I've asked the same question, it's like, why is it that you don't, want to be on the contractor side of this game anymore and it's always that it's always just tired of the chase man and in the back of my head i go weak <laughs> i don't say that to you but i'm looking at you like you're a quitter yeah. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't hack it huh uh, but anyways what do you guys think about that you guys uh have these uh, built-in i don't know stereotypes of the people that you work with and the people that you surround yourself with in the field in a sense, yeah. I mean, I th- it's funny. We were just talking about that adjuster we had today, both of us, Dan and I, on two separate properties. He he tried to recruit me mm-hmm. <laughs> to be a, a, a company adjuster for Big Red. So you can be a dick. I, and I was like, uh, no, thanks, bud. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, I don't. He's like, well, we've always got openings, and I'm always looking for good talent. And I was like, well, we obviously disagree on what we're looking at. <laughs> so, <laughs> but... um uh i i yeah i mean i think that 
I'm I secretly I think that the most mostly in just in sales volume, I think the three of us need each other. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. As like a I gotta keep up or I gotta stay ahead or whatever it is, right? Yeah. Um but yeah, I've run into probably not as many as you, but I've I've run into I don't know, thirty or forty adjusters that used to be on the contracting side and um I'm I, I used to be the same way with gym owners. Mm -hmm. They're like, Yeah, I used to own a gym. I'm like, so but now you're paying to come to my gym. Mm -hmm. They're like, Yeah, long hours. I was like Weak. Weak. <laughs> <laughs> your mind's not as strong as your body. Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, for the viewers, or anybody that tunes in far enough to watch it, because I know that sometimes people taper off, uh, i got to acknowledge something. Uh, having Dan on the team is a blessing, but it also pisses me the fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wasn't going to bring that up. I wasn't going to say anything. When, <laughs> no, when it pisses me off, not, not in a sense that I'm like mad that he no, does no, as well as he does, but... This year has been a specific year I've taken a route of I'm going to focus on certain things that aren't necessarily going to aid in my ability to sell ample amounts of shit. He always tells me about how much more he <laughs> well, does. Well, when, when he said that we all three need each other, I was like, uh, we won't mention Christian. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a side, kit, like, poke. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, it's a, it's a breath of fresh air to have somebody like you on the team. So. I appreciate that. Um, well, Ryan, you have uh, – what else do we want to dive into here about Dan? Well, I think that – I mean, what, what, so I, I was talking earlier about like the, what we were talking about yesterday, right? The, um, the, the thing that kind of sets us apart, I, I in, a, in a lot of the sales world, they would call it hustle, mm -hmm. right? Um, or grit. Um, what do you think gave you that? Yeah, I think that. <sighs> or maybe, I, I, maybe I think two, two layered question. What is the motivating factor? And then, because that changes. Yeah, right? that definitely changes. Um, but what gave you that? I, I would say, like, just the way that I grew up and the environment that I grew up in <clears throat> wasn't the most competitive or wasn't the most uh, successful mm -hmm. childhood growing up. So I think that right there showed me, I mean, it showed me a couple different things. Um, one, it showed me how to be a better father, husband, friend, um, just kind of all across the board, try to be a better person. But I think the second thing it showed me like, hey, I don't want to live in this stigma and I want to do, do better for my family. So uh, my family means everything to me and I just want to do the best for them. Mm -hmm. I, I want to show up every single day. I want to succeed for them. Um, even, before, even before the kids, uh, it was just like, okay, this is what I need to do, and I need to support my family, and this is the best way to do it, and I get to do what I love. I, I mean, I get to talk to people. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why I work as much as I do. Mm -hmm. I was talking to my wife about this the other night. I was like, maybe a bad quality of mine is like I'm kind of like a workaholic, and she's like, yeah and no. Uh, she's like, yeah, it sucks because it does take a lot of time away from the family, but like I try to tell uh, my boy, he's like, I, I want you to be home more, and I was like, well, Daddy – stays gone so that you guys can stay together. So mm -hmm. trying to get that to, to have them understand that is difficult sometimes, but they definitely pushed me through to be better and be a better person. Yeah. I had a, I, I, similar with my daughter when she was younger, yeah. she would, she would say similar things. There's a cool transition. Uh, and I don't really know what caused it. I think it's just maybe her growing up a little bit and maturing, mm -hmm. but, um, Every card she writes me now, Father's Day card, birthday card, random card for no reason, um, she'll always write in there, thank you for working so hard for me. That's awesome. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's like, because it used to be like, well, Dad, I want to be able to do X, Y, and Z, and I want to go do this, and I want to go do this, and, you know, you work a lot, and then I'm in, I'm like, fuck. Right? You kind of feel like shit. Mm -hmm. Right? You definitely do. I mean... Dad guilt. They yeah. talk about mom guilt, but I think dad guilt is a real thing that a totally. lot of people don't really think about or acknowledge or bring yeah. up. And uh, but when that transition happened, I was like, "Oh, now she sees it more," uh, which isn't an excuse in the sense of like I can just get away with working more now. But it's like, 
she understands now that yeah. it's it's a shared vision type thing. But I think that I, I think I've got this pretty pegged with you. But would you agree that part of your probably a large part of your self esteem? It's the same thing with me. Comes from the ability to provide. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah. So I think like a lot of people maybe don't understand that that one percent, I guess you could say, or like that hustle for me is not like there's no part of it that's a chore. Yeah. Right. Sometimes it may feel like that after, you know, three, four or five weeks of 70 hour weeks. But it's like the sense of fulfillment I get from this is priceless yep. comparative to the the long hours and arduous work that we put in or, you know, doing the same things repetitively over and over and over. It's like, this is a very large part of who I am and providing for you guys makes me feel better about myself. Right. I feel that my, my family is my identity. Right. And their, their security is how I find my fulfillment. Yeah. However, the more secure they are, the more, the, you know, the more happy I am yeah. about my best peace you feel regardless yeah. Regardless of how much separation that there is, I remember there was a complete change. So I've always had, I've always had a, you know, abominable will and work ethic. It's always been, I just am, would rather die than quit type of person. But I remember specifically something that happened with my sales um, ability um, when I found out that my son was on the way, and uh, yeah, so I was actually in the middle of a changing career fields. So I wanted to change routes. It was still in the sales profession, but just completely something different. And uh, I was going down the road to doing all this stuff, and I was starting to build my book of business. And then I found out, hey, guess what? Here comes little man, you know? And I immediately, oh, yeah, works. I rem- immediately changed routes, went straight back to the gym world, and went into a different chain. And um, with, I picked this one specifically because of how they allowed salespeople to work. So even if you weren't on the clock, you were able to sell, nice. right? Uh-huh. Uh, which was awesome for me because in other places it wasn't the case. And any quality salesperson knows that it's not the payroll that you're looking for. It's the commission that you're, you're, you're fighting for. And that's the determining factor of how, you know, how your life on the outside is going to be and how much security there is in it. So. I would literally show up three or four hours before my shift, stay three or four hours after my shift, and just pull people off the floor and sell them personal training. And I remember there was something something that happened in the midst of understanding that I had to support my family that I was like, I was like, I will never stop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will never stop. It wasn't just I'd rather die than quit. I was like, I'm not even going to die. I just will never stop. Yeah. 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 So. It's like when people say, like, well, you don't have to work so much. I'm like, no, 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 you don't get it. You don't get it. I'm like, no, no, no. It's like, like I, I do. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but, actually, <laughs> I, I do, and I also enjoy it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Where it's sometimes it's hard to find the enjoyment on the day to day, but in the grand scheme of things, mm-hmm. it's like, like Kendall the other day, we went to Shields and I got her a Lego, and she goes, I'm really happy that we can go to the store and get a Lego like this and build it and that we're able to do that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, thanks. That's enough fuel for me for the next year. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like, it's like like that. that's like a, shy, a shot of nitrous, right? Yeah. You know, it's like, well, one, I'm grateful that she recognizes it. But two, it's, it's like uh, it's, a, it's validation. Oh, yeah. Right? It's a, a pretty hefty dose of validation. Yeah, there's occasional little tidbits that pop out of their mouth and they don't know it. Yeah. It makes you cry on the inside. Oh, yeah. I was actually yeah. talking to you about this the other night. Yeah. Is there's multiple things that happen that make you want to cry on the inside. Oh, yeah. Like mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a joyful cry, but you just look at them and when they grow up and they do something, you're like, man, this yeah. dude, you're crushing me right now. Like I could just, I could start crying right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what, uh, what, what challenges have you faced shifting from the car world to the the roofing side of things and how did that challenge your sales ability i think the biggest challenge that i faced was uh complacency uh being in the car business for as long as i was and kind of having it i don't want to say on the easy street but i kind of was on autopilot per se and it was just it just worked for me it just clicked and it was uh it was, it came naturally to me. Mm-hmm. 
And then the totally flip, kind of like talking about kids, is um, I, I realized that there is more to life than just working seven days a week inside one building 80 plus hours a week. And that's kind of what geared that, geared that, uh, that change. So it's like my, my wife said, if you're going to change, you might as well change now. Um, so that's what I did. And then it was just a whole new, it was a whole new environment for me. I mean, I knew nothing about construction. I didn't know what a rake was. I didn't know what an eve was. Like <laughs> I knew the roof had shingles up there, but I like had hung Christmas lights 20 times. And I like, I've looked at the roof. I'm like, yeah, it looks great. Like <laughs> there's shingles up there. So <laughs> I think for me, just understanding what goes into building a roof uh, to correlation with the customer mm -hmm. um, instead of just kind of, I remember the first person uh, I, I sold a roof to, uh, we had Billy that went with me and, as soon as the customer answered the door, it's like, hey, this is Billy. He's new. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he told me the story yesterday from his perspective. That's funny. <laughs> I was like, if there's any questions, just uh, ask me. But Billy's going to just shadow me, make sure uh, he's learning stuff. And <laughs> Billy's looking at me like a deer in headlights, like, dude, what are you doing right now? <laughs> uh, but long story short, I mean, everything worked out great. The customers were happy. And uh, I, me and Billy kind of laugh about that to this day still. Uh, but just understanding that the realm of construction and how much actually goes into building a roof. It's not like, hey, I'm going to just throw shingles up there and you're good to go. So I'd say understanding that, but everything else, I mean, it sales is sales, whether you're selling gym memberships or mm -hmm. cars or roofs, <clears throat> there's still the fundamentals there that you that you lean on. And the biggest one I, I lean on is relationships. Um, at all cost, relationships have always been my key to success. When I was selling cars, when I was running a car dealership, you just built good relationships and, and the people will continue to stay loyal to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the, uh, I mean, you say it all the time, I do too, but it's, it's, I think it's the most, it's the highest asset that any employee or somebody starting a business can have is understanding salesmanship. Yeah. Right. It's, it's like, a universal language, right? So, like, if you have high, high sales aptitude, you are s tremendously more hireable. Yeah, in absolutely. any in any position or any any company or industry. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so much so that Fortune 500 companies are mm -hmm. looking and weighing the scale on their recruits based off of their experience in sales and communication more yeah. than their education. Absolutely, which is pretty impressive, yeah. right? It's like you went to school for twelve years to get this degree, but you can't talk to anybody. I'm going with that guy. Right. <laughs> you know, that's kind of funny because I, di I didn't go to school um, whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> I told uh, that was one of the things is, is my grandma always wanted me. She's like, hey, if you go to college, she's like, I'll pay for pay for college for you. I want you to have a college education. I was like, yeah, so I was like, screw that. I was like, nobody looks at degrees anymore. And so then that's where it like kind of geared me towards. I was like, OK, if I'm going to do something, I need to do something in sales because mm -hmm. they're not going to require a degree. And it's kind of based off experience. Um, obviously, I want to be able to get into the biochem world whatsoever, but here we are. That's all right. I don't need to get into it. It's not that much fun unless you're a nerd like me and this guy. Right. So, I'm just kidding. Um, speaking of kids. Yeah. <laughs> speaking um, of kids. Well, in order to wrap it up, because I know we got more things to get onto, tell us what your favorite part about working here is. I would say my favorite part about working here is just the people that I work with. Uh, now, there's some days I'm like, I would beg to differ, <laughs> but uh, for the most part, I mean, just that family environment. Um, as you guys know, uh, all of our kids are in here. Um, it's it's supported. It's not like frowned upon. So I really like the um, family atmosphere, the flexibility that I get with my schedule. So it's not like, all right, Dan, you have to be here from nine to five every single day. You have to ask me for every single thing that you have to do. It's like, Hey, I show up to work. I know what I have to do, and then I can take care of all my other stuff on my own. So, yeah. well, you've earned that right, Dan. You've proven that you're Captain Independent. I try. Always going to come in with better numbers <laughs> right. than me. <laughs> how, how much did you have this week? Sixty-eight. You got beat seventy-four. Beat seventy-four. <laughs> I'm going to go say something right now. I should have upset the paint. We're all we're all damn close this week. You're sixty-eight. I'm yeah. seventy-one. You're seventy-four. Yeah. You know, this yeah. is the worst. You know, I was always kicking everybody's ass. And this <laughs> year comes along, like, oh, okay. 
All right. You're like Thomas, Dose, you're Dose like Thomas pride. the train. Like, I think I can. I think I can. Oh, <laughs> buddy, I know I can. You know, if I spend more time selling, you guys would be in trouble. Oh. We'll save that we for should, We day. should have like a... a Close down the business for a Like a one, one or two week <laughs> sell-off. I'd be down with that. Yeah. But it has to be self-generated. It's oh, from self-generated. the door knock through. Yeah. yeah. I'm down with that. Don't tempt me with a good time. Yeah. I have a good time. I, well, as long as we can pass off our responsibilities on everybody right. else, we can actually <laughs> do it. Then I'm, I'm in. So yeah. All right. Well, Dan, you have anything else? Closing thoughts? No, I, I appreciate being on here, and uh, as always, it's always fun. All all in good fun. So well, we appreciate you. Did you yeah. Got anything else? No, I'm good. All right. Well, thank you all for tuning in to Into the Lions Den. Um, please like and subscribe. Engage in the content. If you have any questions about how Dan makes his hair look so perfect every single day. Please That's my put wife. it in the comments below. <laughs> um, but until next time, catch up with yourself. Later. Later, guys. <laughs>